Hello everyone and welcome to Tone for Days for another vinyl review. Please remember to like and subscribe as it will help me grow my channel. So today we've got a special release for Record Store Day falling on Friday, November 25th this year, which also happens to be Black Friday. This is Dave Grohl's Dream Widow, which is the make-believe band featured in the Foo Fighters film Studio 666. I remember sitting in the theater watching the movie thinking, wow. I hope Roll decides to actually release an album's worth of this material. I just loved how mean and thick it sounded. So you can imagine my delight when they released an album's worth of music on streaming sites earlier this year. I was even more floored when I heard that this album was going to be released for a record store day. I penciled in the date, took a mental health day away from work, and here we are. So. If you've been listening to the music, you already got a sense of what to expect. The music is nothing short of awesome, but you do have to remember that it's still a Dave Grohl record exercising his metal demons with this release. The movie, as enjoyable as it was, was also classified as a comedic horror, and in some ways, so is the music found on Dream Widow. The movie had me in stitches at times, and reading some of the lyrics also gives me a good chuckle. The lyrics are expectingly dark and satanic, consciously playing into themes associated with the doom, thrash, and metal genres featured on this album. Grohl plays everything except for lead guitar on the first five tracks, which are played by guitarist and movie producer Jim Rhoda. Keyboard duties are left up to Studio 606 engineer Oliver Roman and Foo's keyboard player Rami Jaffe. So in some way, you could call this a Grohl side project, and aside from another side project of his, 2004's Probop. The first four songs were about as doomy or metal as we're probably ever going to hear Grohl commit to tape. But maybe I shouldn't bet on that because Grohl leaves no stone unturned when it comes to exploring various musical ideas, so releasing a sophomore effort for Dream Widow wouldn't be out of the question and super cool. Tracks 5 and 6, Angel with Severed Wings and Come All Ye Faithful respectively, have that classic Grohl touch and in a way sound like Foo Fighters tunes with their melodic sensibilities and straightforward rock vocal delivery. The album closes out with the groovy and stitched together Lacrimus de Ibrius, translating in English as The Tears of God, according to Grohl in an interview he did with Exclaim magazine. So the record itself is a basic single cardboard sleeve and I've already opened it, giving it a wash and a spin clean. To be honest, I was nervous that my copy was going to have factory defects when I played it because it was dirty with debris, had some surface scratches and it was cloudy and almost grey looking. But I've since listened to it and although the crackling and pops are noticeable on quiet passages, most of the music on this record is pretty loud and heavy so it's only a little bit a little disappointing. Most of the record is pretty clean sounding. I paid $32.99 Canadian which I'm quite happy about because I thought this was going to run me at least 40 bucks before taxes. There isn't any download card but the inner sleeve is a nice soft material to the touch but not poly lined. I'll be using a Mo5 sleeve to store the vinyl. One side features the band logo and the other side features the song's lyrics and liner notes. Now for the auto quality of the record itself, wow. It sounds exactly how I was hoping it would sound. The EQ is open and wide, the guitars are crunchy, the bass isn't buried like on some metal releases, the cymbals ping and chime the way I like, the bass drum and toms thud and the snare drum slaps with every hit. It's an even sounding record and although slightly compressed, it sounds rather open. That being said, I've compared this vinyl copy to the version streaming on Apple Music and they aren't so different. The vinyl has that warmth you'd expect to hear from a well-pressed record. The frequencies are full. Now I have a decent entry level topping E30 DAC connecting my desktop computer to my audio system. And where I usually find streaming Apple Music to sound more like listening to CD, these two listening experiences sound virtually the same. Streaming the lossless version on Apple Music is cleaner and digital sounding, but I do need to dial back the treble and volume. But that's not uncommon practice while listening to anything through Apple Music. My vinyl sounds thick and warm, especially at louder volumes. If you weren't successful in getting your hands on a copy 
and left listening to the lossless streaming version, not to worry, they sound equally awesome. Which makes me happy to know so I don't feel like I'm missing out when listening online. Anyhow, I'm really satisfied with this purchase and I'm happy I got my hands on one. I actually tried to purchase two copies thinking I'd keep the better sounding one and sell the other one uh, that I picked up at the record store, but they would only allow me to buy one, which I think is a really good practice actually. What are your thoughts on this record? Did you get your hands on a vinyl copy? What do you think about the music? What do you think about the album? Anyhow, thanks for watching and as mentioned earlier, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below and please subscribe as it will allow me to grow this channel and receive more exposure. Alright, until next time, be kind to one another and take care.